one term that hasn't come up yet that I know is very important for Marx, and I'm not thinking of alienation yet, but we'll get to that maybe another time. But I wanted to ask a bit about what exploitation means for Marx and how it figures into what we've been talking about. Good. Okay, so exploitation is uh, an important concept in, in Marx's you know, final major work, um, Capital. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, exploitation is, you know, he has both a kind of polemical use for it. Yeah. Um, you know, it's exploitation is theft, something like that. Um, but I think, you know, strictly speaking, it's, it's a purely technical notion for Marx. Um, and it's how we explain how the capitalist is able to uh, uh, extract profit from the productive enterprise. Now, the problem with the technical notion of exploitation, which I'll, I'll say a little bit more about the details in a second, um, is that it does depend upon the labor theory of value. Um, now, there is an industry of, uh, you know, readers of capital you know, who are like readers of the Talmud. You know, they they detect things that nobody else has ever noticed. And, and they think that, in fact, Marx isn't committed to the labor theory of value or the labor theory of value doesn't mean what people thought it meant and, and so on. We don't engage very extensively with this literature. Michael Heinrich is probably the, the, the strongest uh, example of this. Um, I think it's pretty clear that Marx accepted the classical labor theory of value that you, Adam Smith kind of suggests it, but it's not clear he really held it. David Ricardo, another English economist uh, who's very important for Marx, clearly held the labor theory of value. Um, and the labor theory of value, very crudely put, suggested that the price of commodities, right? stands in some important explanatory relationship to the amount of human labor required to produce the commodity. Okay. Um, so, uh, and, and Marx refined this notion in, way, in a number of ways going beyond Ricardo. So Marx said, what we need to think about is, um, uh, is it were abstract human labor that is abstracted away from uh, the particular amount of labor required, you know, to produce this product or that product. He said we need to think in terms of, as it were, the average labor time, right, because some workers are more efficient than others and so on. Um, but he did think that the, you know, the so, as he put it, the socially necessary labor time to produce a commodity would explain what Marx called the production price of the commodity, the production price of the commodity is not the price on the market. Marx understood, as well as any neoclassical economist, that the production price, that the commodity price on the market could be affected by a lot of variables, including supply and demand. The production price was a kind of technical notion for Marx. The production price was um, determined by figuring out the socially necessary labor time to produce the commodity, including the socially necessary labor time required to produce the technology that was used to produce the commodity, right? Um, plus the rate of profit, right? Or the rate of exploitation. This is what gets us back to exploitation. And Marx spent a lot of the third volume of capital trying to show that he could make this work and he didn't succeed. And I think everybody agrees with, 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 the, with a few exceptions. Most people agree he didn't actually succeed in, in, in explaining this. Now, exploitation. All right, so we've got the labor theory of value in the background. So according to Marx, exploitation operates as follows. Um, uh, the worker, right, the labor power of the worker is itself a commodity. Right? And therefore, the price of the commodity is determined by the socially necessary labor time to produce that labor power. Right? So we can put a price on, as it were, how much, right, uh, that labor power is is worth, right? So we've got a factor in, you know, the worker needs to eat, the worker needs shelter. Um, the worker also needs to reproduce because capitalists need future workers and, and so on. I'm alighting some, a lot of technical details here just for the simple mm -hmm. idea. 
So the labor theory of value tells us um, how much it costs to produce the labor power that the worker sells to the capitalist. Okay? Um, and the labor power right, that, um, that the capitalist purchases um, can be used for whatever amount of time the capitalist purchases it for, let's say 12 hours. Right? But if uh, it only takes six hours of labor time to produce the value of the labor power right, that the capitalist bought, then that additional six hours of labor, right, which adds value to the commodity produced, right, that becomes the product, that becomes the property of the, of the capitalist, right? That is the surplus right, value that the laborer produces. The laborer works for six hours to produce the value of their own labor power, given the labor theory of value, but then works another six hours adding value to the commodities that are produced and doesn't get paid for that at all. That's the sense in which exploitation is theft, right? The worker works more time than they're actually paid for. Okay? Um, and it's that extra labor time that produces the extra value that is the source of all profit. That's Marx's view given the, the labor theory of value. Now, the problem is if the labor theory of value is wrong, right, as it almost certainly is, with apologies to, uh, <laughs> to the Michael Heinrich followers out there, um, if the labor theory of value is not plausible, then we could have other explanations for the, you know, the source of profit, right? So, you know, at the time Marx is writing Capital, the sort of, marginalist revolution in economics is occurring at the same time, but he's totally unaware of it. Right? And the marginalist revolution says um, it's the marginal utility that consumers get from a product that determines the price of the product. Right? And so you make a profit if you produce things um, that are useful for people, right? that uh, satisfy their marginal utility such that they're willing to pay for. It, right? And that's all there is to it. Mm -hmm. Again, slight simplification, but that's the that's the basic idea. Um, and uh, so, if that's right, then uh, then Marx's explanation of exploitation um, doesn't work. Okay? On the other hand, I still think you know there's there is the colloquial sense of exploitation, the more polemical sense, you know, that still has some you know applicability, right? I mean, look. The fact is that, um, you know, uh, <clears throat> if, you, if you go to the Ford, you know, you know, uh, auto plant, right, the workers there are getting paid a fixed wage, but the products that are sold are generating profit, including for people who don't do any work, right? People who, you know, are basically, you know, own Ford stock or own the company and are just sitting on their ass, right? Um, that's a colloquial sense in which they're being exploited. They're producing value that they're not being paid for. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, all the children of the, the Walton children, right? Heirs to the Walmart fortune, right? These people are worth billions of dollars, right? They don't do anything, but they wouldn't be worth a dime if people weren't wor working in Walmart stores and working in the Walmart warehouses and so on and so forth. <laughs> So it's natural in those contexts to, you know, you can sort of get some sense of why you might say, well, they're being ex exploited. Um, but I actually, I do think that the notion of exploitation, um, as Marx uses it, is dependent on the labor theory of value. And I don't think um, his notion of it survives uh, rejecting the, um, the, the labor theory of value. But I also don't think that's much of a loss to Marx's theory. Right? Because um, however profit is generated, Marx is clearly right that capitalists live to acquire profit, right? And he's absolutely right that the incentive structure that creates for capitalists is one in which they want to reduce their labor costs as much as possible, which means the ultimate endpoint for capitalism is one in which capitalists utilize very little human labor power, and that's a disaster for humanity. Right? Mm. So... All those aspects of his, uh, I think, of his view um, of, of, of capitalism actually don't depend on either the labor theory of value or his particular theory of, of exploitation. <laughs>